Shaft. BBC Radio Manchester. Over the last couple of weeks, I've been learning about stained glass windows and why these beautiful works of art have come to be so closely associated with churches. Andrew Seddon is the founder of the stained glass leaded glass company based in Bolton. They specialize in making and repairing stained glass windows. For the final installment in this series, Andrew spoke to me about the techniques he uses to produce his beautiful work. But first, I asked where people might see some of his art. Right in the centre of Manchester, the Church of England offices, called Church House, which is at 90 Deansgate, has got a small chapel at which they, they installed about... Uh, I think it was about nearly 20 years ago, and I, I designed a, a new window based on the creation to go into the church house chapel, so that's that's one place. We do have lots of churches in the Manchester area where we've, we've, we've either restored the windows or we've made new stained glass. Uh, and again, if you look on our website on, on the churches page, uh, you'll be able to see see the, the stained glass that we've done in lots of churches around Manchester and Bolton. And the website address is? Uh, it's stainedleadedglass.co.uk stainedleadedglass.co.uk I believe you've had some uh, interesting guests besides me here at your studios. That's right, yeah. Uh, about a week ago we had the film crew here from Songs of Praise and they were very interested in our work on the stained glass and making stained glass windows for churches. The programme's going to be called Churches Go Green, so they were looking up specifically about sustainability in the stained glass industry and how churches are using stained glass. But because we specialise in the stained glass encapsulation, which improves the insulation of the, of the stained glass, how churches are using that in their buildings to improve their insulation and their green credentials. Andrew, can I thank you very much indeed for taking time to be with us thanks for talking us through the process is are you able to show me some stained leaded glass being made that's right yeah we've got some uh, church windows that we're making at the moment so you, you're quite welcome to come through and have a look well we're we're out in the what area do you call this uh, this is the the workshop area of the studio and how does it all happen? Explain to me, please. Yeah, so we've got on the workbench here, this is a window we're making for a local church, St John Fisher Church in Kersley. This window was designed by a member of the congregation. They've done a fantastic job. And this is the first stained glass that he designed, the, the designer, and it, brilliant design. And it shows, it shows the saint. And, and he stood in front of a landscape of looking over Manchester from Kersley and looking across towards uh, Ramsbottom. So we've got some of the local landmarks like the Holcomb Tower, which is going to go on to the design. And we're in the process of making this window now. So you can see we've got all the glass has been cut. So you, you get a basic idea of what the window is going to look like at this stage. We've got all the coloured glass shapes cut. It looks like a mosaic of colours, really. And the, the next stage that we're doing on this particular window is doing a lot of glass painting. So it's hand painting the design. So the face and the hands, all the detail of the robes, uh, the detail of the landscape is all painted onto the glass. And it's a special ceramic paint which has to be fired in the kiln. So it, once we've painted it onto the glass, it's fired in the kiln. It's about 560 to 660 degrees, depending on the, the actual uh, paints that we're using. And that fuses the glass paints into the surface of the glass and makes it a permanent feature of the glass. The glass painting can take as long as the, the rest of the window. It's quite an involved process and we have to fire each piece maybe four or five times to get the, the depth of uh, lines, shading and, and the, the final process is called silver stain. And that's the process where you can change the colour of the glass from clear to a yellow colour and this sort of golden yellow colour. It's, it's exactly what stained glass is known for and that's where stained glass gets its name from, is a silver staining process. Now behind you is the original picture, if I'm correct, That's right. for this one. So was this painted by this member of the congregation? It was, yeah. yeah he's, he's done this in chalks. Uh, and we get too close to it, we get chalks all, <laughs> chalk all over us. But he's done a fantastic design with a figure of the saint, like I say, with the landscape behind. And so we, we're taking this original design and we're going to have to... If you look at the, the glass that we've cut, we've had to make some changes to the design to make it possible to actually make it in stained glass. But virtually, the way he's drawn it is the way that we can make it. 
Some of the things that are, are very interesting about the design is that there's quite an elaborate, sort of like a trim to, to his uh, garments. So we've got like a jeweled trim. So we've got gold colours and we've got the blues and it's uh, got all these little jewels all over it. So what we're going to do to to actually do this in stained glass is we're going to do hand painting. We're going to do some... Uh, silver stain which creates the yellow and the gold colors but for the for the blues for the sapphire jewels we're actually going to use uh, little shapes of, of blue cut glass and then we're going to melt them in the kiln to make like little jewel shapes and then we're, we're going to apply these onto uh, the trims of the garments and the dark lines did he draw those because that those are your cut lines aren't That's they? Right. That, they they're the lead lines yeah, so they are all drawn on. So, so the picture that we've got is virtually as the stained glass is going to appear when it's finished. Uh, so, so from his drawing, we've then done a full-size cut line drawing, which we've got on the workbench, and we've used the, the thin lines to cut the cut the glass too. Some of the glass which have, is on the bench at the moment, we've got the the little blue shapes, which we're going to make the blue sapphire yeah. ju jewels out of. And that's, right, that's yeah. actual glass, isn't it? Yeah. it. I, can, I can cut a piece for you yes, if please. you like. OK, then. Show me a bit of cutting and then I'll get out of your hair. OK, so uh, we've got some, some blue uh, glass. It's a glass called cathedral glass. And we've got a, a small glass cutter. And the, what's special about this glass cutter is it's got a, a small wheel on the end of the cutter made from tungsten carbide. Tungsten carbide is just about the hardest man-made substance, much harder than the glass. Uh, not quite as hard as diamonds, uh, but much harder than the glass. So when we roll the, the cutter across the glass, it'll make a very small score mark on, onto the surface of the glass. And then with a little tap, we can make turn the score mark into a crack, and then we should be able to break the glass. And this instrument you're using, it's no bigger than a pen, is it? Yeah, in fact, you, you hold it very much like a pen, uh, just between the finger and thumb. So I'm pulling out some pieces of the blue glass and then I'll cut some of the, the little gem shapes that we're going to turn into these sapphire gems in the kiln. So I, I press the glass cutter onto the surface of the glass and you should be able to hear the sound of the cutter as it makes its score mark. So we've got a little oval shape created on the on the surface of the blue glass and if I give it a little tap you should be able to hear the crack forming through the glass there we go that's the piece broken wow. into <laughs> well, we'll give it another tap and be able to create the other side of the, the oval absolutely brilliant perfectly formed <laughs> it does take a little bit of practice yeah. but I think you know, with half an hour's practice, I think you, you'll be able to do a bit of glass cutting yourself. I, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> There's one more question and I'll, I'll be gone. From this arriving in the studio yes. to this over here on the work surface and the complete glass, yeah. how long? I'd say we're probably about halfway through the design at the moment and it's taken us about three weeks so far. My daughter Katie's made all this window so far. She's done all the glass cutting, she's doing all the glass painting and she's deeply into the glass painting at the moment. And like I say, the glass painting it takes the longest time. We've probably got about half of that glass painting done. So we've got quite a way to go yet. And this window, once we've, we've, we've made this, this is actually going to be sealed inside a double glaze unit, like I was saying before, and fitted into the church. It's quite a modern church and they've got UPVC windows. So we're taking out the existing double glaze unit and we're going to replace it with this big stained glass window in, in double glazing. Well, Andrew, can I thank you very much indeed for taking time to speak to us today. It's an absolutely fascinating subject and a fascinating process. And I look forward to finding some of your windows around Manchester. Yeah, well, check out the website and you'll be able to find a church near you, I'm sure. I must say thank you to everybody down there at the Stained Leaded Glass Company based in Bolton. Thoroughly enjoyed that time. 29 minutes to 8.